Tokyo. The capital of Japan is one of the world's great megacities. It's an eclectic mix of modern and traditional, from big buildings and bright lights to ancient shrines and rituals. Hi, I am Catherine, and I am going to share four books that will transport you to the streets of Tokyo. First up is A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Ozeki. A teenage girl called Nao works in a maid cafe in Akihabara. The area is famous for electronic shops, anime stores, and general craziness. It's full of people at all times of the day and night, from nerds and gamers to Mario Kart drivers. Each day, Nao writes in her diary, from the dramatic, I won't be around tomorrow, to the fascinating, capturing the story of a Buddhist nun who is her 104-year-old great-grandmother. Mysteriously, at the same time, Ruth, a writer on a remote island in Canada, is walking along the shoreline and discovers a diary in a Hello Kitty lunchbox. Nothing is as it seems. Is it the same diary? For most of the book, I was wondering what's actually going on. I really like Now's honesty about the challenges she faces each day and her philosophies on time and life. Ruth sometimes was a bit irritating, but maybe that was the clash between East and West thinking. The author, Ozeki, is an American Japanese and a long time Zen practitioner. I like that she intertwined throughout the story insights into Zen practices and rituals. The book has great pace swapping between the main storylines effortlessly and was an emotional roller coaster to ride and savour. Book two is The Street of a Thousand Blossoms by Gao Tsukiyami. Hiroshi, a sumo wrestler, and his younger brother Kenji were orphaned at a young age and brought up by their loving grandparents on the street of a thousand blossoms in Yanka. It's a traditional area known for artists, temples, and winding lanes. As they grow into adults, each brother has to choose their own path in life. Will they be able to follow the sage advice their grandparents instilled in them as boys or will they stray from their chosen path? Cherry blossoms and the changing of seasons deliver a wonderful backdrop to the story, spanning from the 1930s to the 1960s. Tsukiyama delivers insights into the horrors of living in Tokyo through World War II and the aftermath. The brothers have very different personalities. However, I like them both equally, especially their sense of honor during the trials and tribulations they endure. As a Westerner, the immersion into the traditional Japanese arts like sumo wrestling and no mask making was fascinating. Book three is Norwegian Wood by Haruki Murakami and the only book on this tour that is written by a Japanese author. The main character, Wannabe, looks back on his life as a student in university in Tokyo. A time when he has two girlfriends, one is trouble, the other slightly crazy. No matter if he is hanging out in the streets of Shibuya or Shinjuku, Wannabe wallows around in a state of hopeless love, trying to figure out what to do with his life. The words flow beautifully across the page and the characters are so real you could touch them. My favorite character was Rico. And she had a bit of common sense, which is surprising for a patient living in a mental asylum. However, this book was not my cup of tea. Teenage angst, suicides, and the demons in our minds is not my idea of entertainment. When reading books set in Tokyo, I actually ended up in a reading slump. So many Japanese authors focused on themes of loneliness, suicide, or teenage angst that I did not enjoy reading the stories. Many books on, I figured out it was hard for me to connect with stories by Japanese authors and discovered that Western authors with an authentic voice from years of experience in Japan was much more my style. The fourth book is The Cat and the City by Nick Bradley. This book is a wonderful adventure through the suburbs of Tokyo, but a challenge to describe. For the first few chapters, I thought it was a collection of short stories. Then I realized there was links between the stories. The book starts with Kentaro, a tattoo artist in Asakusa, one of the traditional areas of Tokyo, right by the river. At a good pace, each chapter moves on to the lives and losses of one person, be they a homeless actor, a taxi driver, or a translator. Then a cat starts popping up in the strangest places and creating unexpected connections. 
The book is a very clever way of tackling the human side of living in a mega city like Tokyo. One other aspect I enjoyed is each chapter is peppered with one or two Japanese words. And I liked looking up the meaning and learning more. For example, Nijakai is second party, or a festival held in, in a shrine is a omatsuri. The author Bradley grew up in the UK and studied and lived in Japan for many years. He delivers a first rate book for us, Gaijins, that's Japanese word for foreigners, to explore Tokyo through the minds and eyes of a local. And that's just four of many books set in the mega city of Tokyo. Let me know in the comments below what you like about Tokyo or a favorite book set in Tokyo. I should read next. Sayonara.